and it's quite a familiar phrase in our methodology. What, what teachers should say is, dear students, I don't know what I'm doing, but repeat after me anyway. <laughs> but teachers usually don't say the first bit, they just say the second bit. <coughs> repeat after me. Sounds good. But we need something more than repeat after me, because repeat after me is after habits. And to build an old, a new habit on top of an old habit, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't work. We know it doesn't work. Okay. Uh, there are two solutions to two problems. Here's the first problem, which is physicality, and I've just been saying that. Okay. Kind of muscle knowing, internal muscle knowing, perhaps muscle sensing. Okay, so that's the problem which I've been outlining. A lack of physicality. And that is also part of the answer to why pronunciation is divorced from grammar and vocabulary. The grammar and vocabulary can fit into the, the uh, problem-solving format of our teaching, but pronunciation doesn't really fit there. It is not a cognitive algebra it is a muscular coordination. And that doesn't go into course books. You can have sort of simple, you know, exercises, but not of the kind that I'm about to show you. Uh, problem number two is, well, solution number two is the chart, uh, quite by chance. <coughs> and problem number two is this, that pronunciation is kind of mysterious, uh, endless, floating in the air. Where is it? Where is a sound? I catch a sound, and I open my hand, and there's nothing there. What is this? Where do I get it? Where do I get a sound? Words in the dictionary, grammar's in the book. But where's the sound to be found? And how do I hold it? What holds on to a sound in a person? Certainly not thinking, which is kind of the way we're going. But thinking doesn't hold on to sounds. It's physicality that holds on to sounds. Is there a map? What is the map? Well, I'm saying that that is the map, and that this is a kind of a visual, uh, kinesthetic uh, tool. Let me just, a one minute guided tour. You probably know this, but if you don't, or if you do, let's do it. Here's everything. So in one look, in one gestalt, we have everything. Front of the mouth, back of the mouth, top of the mouth, bottom of the mouth, teeth, tongue, tongue near the top, tongue goes back, get those sound, tongue goes forward, get those sound, open the mouth a bit, tongue at the front, tongue moves back, open the mouth a bit more, tongue at the front, tongue moves back. It's a diagram, it's not, it's not a scale map, but it's a diagram. And what is neighbours in the mouth are neighbours on the chart. Each, this vowel is defined by those ones. This vowel is defined by those ones. They are not positions. These ones are positions. These are not positions. They are shapes. So you can't find the place. You have to find the zone and then tune it with your ears. It's slippery stuff, vowels. It's like playing the trombone. There's no exact place. Uh, consonants are like playing a piano. There's an exact place and you hit it. Here, the diphthongs. Well, two of these make one of these. And so these are free of charge. When you've got this, you get this free of charge. And there's, there's three kinds. Ones which finish with that, ones which finish with that, and ones which finish with this. In American English, they've got rid of these. So just these five which remain. English is, is on the way to get rid of these. Why are these? They, they go because they have a, a very weak ending. They end kind of nowhere. In, in the, this is a nowhere sound. This is as near to nothing as you can have. So these end in nothing. They're weak vowels. They're the least frequent. And already in my lifetime, I used to say, sure. And now I say, sure. Even I used to say, hair. And I probably now say, hair. You know, it's changing even in, in a few decades. And so probably we'll follow the Americans. Yeah. 
It's okay. Some, yeah. <laughs> uh, consonants. Front of the mouth, back of the mouth for stop sound. Stop, go. Front of the mouth, back of the mouth for the continuing sound made by friction. Front of the mouth, back of the mouth for nasal sounds and bits and pieces. But the bits and pieces, these are semi-vowels. They can be like vowels, but in English they can be consonants. These three are the sounds you use for connecting words in stream of speech, connected speech. These two are like cousins, which are kind of the same sound in Eastern languages, yeah. some Eastern languages. Yes. Although in European languages they're mostly two different sounds. Mm -hmm. uh, and then this one, which is a kind of uh, uh, odd one out, because it has no place, has no location. It is located in the place of the vowel which follows. It's just an aspiration which finds the vowel. So here we have a map, a map of everything. So it is a thinking tool, but it's also uh, every word in the English language is on there. Every grammar construction is on there. So in one gestalt, the chart shows all the sounds, all the words, all connected speech. It shows how and where sounds are made. I didn't show you everything right now, but I showed you the beginning of how it is mapped onto there. For example, uh, unvoiced, voiced, unvoiced, voiced, everything is in a pair. And as you start to look at it, you suddenly find how very, very simple pronunciation is. And yet we've managed to make such a mess of it, and to make it the most complicated and frightening thing in the world. But there's almost nothing to learn. You don't believe it, do you? <laughs> it also shows how sounds shape each other. And, of course, that all sounds are needed from the beginning. Uh, a syllabus of sounds is a crazy idea because you need everything on day one. And if, if we don't have all the sounds in circulation at beginner level day one, they haven't learned them perfectly, but they must be in circulation. They must be available to, for study. If we don't have them in circulation, then of course students have to default to the mother tongue pronunciation. So, somehow we've got to get everything in there at the beginning. Make everything available. Not everything correct, but everything available. Floating a bit, not fixed. So that's... Oh, this is probably what happened last time. I got it. It's this button at the bottom. Uh, this is very simple. We don't really... Well, let's put it here. So, just to remember, vowel, nothing restricts the airflow. It's voiced, and there's a shape. Everyone's mouth is different, but we all make the same vowel. Interesting. So, with the shape of the tongue and the lips and so on, we can make the vowels. But there isn't an exact location. They are everywhere. A vowel is not in one place. That's why they're kind of slippery. A, a vowel is a shaped voice stream, shaped voice breath stream. And consonants, well there there is a restriction. Two surfaces come together and do something which gets in the way of the air. So we can say that a, a consonant is an interrupted breath stream. And sometimes it has voice, which is part of the interruption, and sometimes it doesn't. So that's there. Now, this is what we're going to do. Uh, let me think. We're finished with that for the moment, so I'm going to put it on B. Can you see this thing? Mm -hmm. I know at the back it's a bit difficult. I put it as high as I could, but this thing is already standing on, on tiptoes and I can't really <laughs> I'll just uh, go uh, a little bit from the very, very beginning, the first minute of the first day with beginners or intermediate, 
or advanced or native speakers or anybody else, fluent speakers, any, anybody. This is where we begin. Everyone begins in the same place. You, I, I miss it. You've seen this probably on YouTube, and I, so I'm not going to spend much time on this. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Please find your mouth and make some funny noise, shapes. Now look at me. Make this sound. Again? It's here. Okay, cool. And now look. Watch. What is this sound? Please take it. <laughs> what is this sound? <laughs> Don't lose it because we'll be in trouble. <laughs> oh, this one? <laughs> okay, this is for you. <laughs> Kate, please take this. What is this one? <laughs> that one? <laughs> Notice that nothing that I'm doing is having you repeat after me. <laughs> Everything I'm doing is getting you to do stuff and asking you questions. Now, if you're a beginner, how do you ask questions? Well, maybe use the, the mother tongue. I don't know what you do, but all teachers know how to solve that problem. So let's not go into that. But there are ways to solve it. Okay, what's this one? Let's go very slowly from here to here. Are you ready? Now, put your finger here and your thumb here and say this. What do you notice? Movement. Movement. And tell me, what's this kind of position? Back. Looks back. And what else? Wide. And what else? What other words can you find? Narrow. Narrow. Okay, good. Other words? Spread. Smile. So we can find, we don't need technical words, we just need a word for the class that is enough for the moment. Smile, spread, okay. And over here, what's the position? Narrow. Round, narrow, okay, cool. <laughs> and now, this one again. Say this sound. E Put your finger here. Okay, go from here. E what is the movement of the lips behind your finger? Okay, so is it forward here? No. Here? Yes. Okay, is it back or forward here? Back. And this one? Forward. Okay. See, I'm asking questions. It's, uh, it is all it's simple stuff, but this is the beginning of proprioception. You are using proprioception to ask my question. We're putting proprioception into circulation. It's obvious, I know it's obvious. But still, in 40 years, anyway. <laughs> now, experiment number two. That is uh, uh, muscle button number one. Now, number two. Say this sound. Put your attention in your tongue. Speak. Can you feel from inside the tip of your tongue? Can you feel it? Speak. Okay. It's somewhere in there. Now, what you're going to do is to take a clean finger <laughs> or your neighbor's finger if it's clean. <laughs> or a pen. A pen will do a pen. Now, what you have to do is to say the sound and with your pen or with your finger just find the tip of your tongue. Don't move the tongue, but move the finger. So speak. You have to open your finger, uh, teeth a bit. You got it? You found your tongue? It's in there somewhere, all right? Yeah, you got it, okay. Now, we're going to go over to that one. Now, but wait, wait, wait. Get your finger in place, find the tip of your tongue. Now go there, but follow your tongue, wherever it goes. Okay, what happens? It goes back. Okay, how far? Very far. How far is very far? I don't know, some centimetres. I, a couple of centimetres, I don't know exactly, I, I've never measured it, but anyway, two centimetres. So, this is button number two. Now, put your attention in your tongue, and without the help of your finger, feel your tongue going forward and back. Is it forward or back here? Forward. 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 Okay, say this sound. Feel your tongue going back. 
feel your tongue coming forward. Okay. And is your tongue forward or back? Back. And your lips forward or back? Forward. Okay, so it's like that. Yeah. Okay, so make this one. The two move in opposite opposite direction. This is English always does this. Some languages can do that. Of this, but English does that. So English speakers get stuck immediately with the sound U. Uh -huh. yeah? Because say this sound. Ooh. Ooh, English. Oh, sorry, e. What's this one? Okay. So this is lips forward or lips back? Forward. And tongue forward or tongue back? back? Okay. And this one? The opposite. Say this one. Okay. Now make this sound. Keep the tongue where it is, but make the lips into that position, but the tongue in this position. And suddenly we have a sound which belongs to other languages but not English. Uh, we can find French and German and Scandinavian, and uh, it has many varieties. But when I was at school, uh, and we just had to learn the French word, two. The teacher said, two. And we say, two. <laughs> two. Two. We couldn't do it because we were habituated to this. We couldn't do that. We could only do that. See? So we felt it, it, we could hear it wasn't good. Eventually the teacher said, good, when it wasn't. Like I said yesterday. And we knew it wasn't. And then began the problem with French. We, for one sound, we knew we, we, we sounded idiotic. <laughs> anyway, that's another story. What's next? No. Say this sound. E We're going there, right? E Stop. E Look. E e <laughs> so we and I didn't send you those sounds. Now you may not be correct here, 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 but you are in the zone. And already you found that zone by yourself. I didn't do anything except to help you look at what's going on in here. So you've now found four zones. They will need refining, but you found four zones by yourself. What's this one? Show me the sound. Where did you put it? Right. Could you put it back on the chart? And you have yours? Where's yours? Up here. Can you put it back here? <laughs> Always recycle sounds. Never waste them. So, what we just did is... I'm not teaching symbols, I'm teaching physical experiences which have an acoustic result. And then we put it on here. And by chance it has a, a sign. But actually you don't need the signs, we could have colours, or we have pictures, anything else. But uh, we use the signs simply because they're in dictionaries. But I'm not teaching signs. Never, never, never do I teach signs. But after a couple of hours they learn them and they very soon want to write them, so you know, it's not a problem. I'm teaching the experience. When you have the experience, to give the experience a name is very easy. But to learn a name when you don't yet have the experience is impossible. And we do it in education all the time. Your teachers, if you get a class list before you meet the class, it's impossible to learn the names until you meet the thing itself, the things. Once you've met the things, you even want the names. It's the same here. Until you have the experience, the names, in this case the signs, are impossible to learn. When you really have a feeling and a sensation of that uh, experience, that physical experience with the acoustic result, you want a name for it, and this is the sign. <laughs> Now, try to look like an idiot. <laughs> you are teachers, yeah. So it should be... <laughs> it should be a skill that you already possess. At the point when you chose to become a teacher. So, uh, if you don't know how to look like an idiot, 
simple instructions. Let go of, relax the muscle in the jaw, in the cheeks, the lips, and the tongue. And now, when you, all those muscles are relaxed, what is the sound? Uh, oh. So this is the idiot sound. <laughs> and uh, make it again, long. And even with my eyes, I can pretty much tell if you're saying the right sound or not. Look, uh, if I make the sound, you will see that as soon as I move my lips, even a tiny bit, the sound changes. So watch me. Uh, uh, can you hear it starting to change? Uh, as soon as the lips move, the sound changes. It's gone. It's extraordinary. And this works for everybody, no matter how big or little your lips or your mouth or your face, it's the same for everybody. So a total relaxation or letting go of the muscles is required for this one. Say it again, the, the long idiot sound. Again? Okay, again? Stop. Small. You see, and I didn't say any of those sounds, and I didn't get you to repeat after me. So we are entering directly into the physicality. Make this sound. Look at me. I do the same, but with less energy. And you're, in the, you're saying different ones, but you're in the zone of here. Each language usually has one or two or three of, of these. This one? Now, without stopping, slide. And again? Now, put your finger here and your thumb here and see what happens. Once more? What do you notice? So the jaw is dropping. So this is button number three. Button number three. So we've discovered the three buttons. We've put them in circulation. Of course, they're not fully explored yet. But this is just to illustrate that in the first 15 minutes, we've put three of the four buttons into circulation. Is that okay? Yes. You accept that? Yeah. yeah. Uh, now, um, so I will then finish the vowels. It's not that I'm teaching the vowels. I'm taking you on a guided tour around vowel land. Mm -hmm and pointing out some of the things that happen in here. I'm helping you to find the geography of your mouth. We don't need, in fact, I don't want linguistic maps of the mouth. I want your proprioceptive map, which doesn't have to be an accurate geographical thing. It is how you feel your mouth. That's what we want. And yet each feels their mouth differently fine. Some people use mouth diagrams, but I would rather just have you making your personal felt proprioceptive diagram. That's me. Um, these, as I said, come free. So once you already have this, so this... Yeah, let go. This is a small idiot. So you have to be a small idiot. Yeah, don't do anything. If you do something, you'll lose it. Okay. So it's a starting point. And then here... Queen Elizabeth II. Oh. She says it all the time on state visits. It's the most useful word in England. You can say it in all circumstances. So uh, you see that once we have these, these are free of charge. You just connect them together. And the discipline is that you must arrive. You can't stop halfway. We must arrive. So again, and then the uh, it's really it's more of the first 
and less of the second. So it's 60-40, but you must finish. These are free of charge. Now, the consonants, uh, I begin in a similar way. So, I might start with this. Uh, what's this sound? And what's this sound? Even if these sounds are not in the language, well, this sound isn't probably in every language. Even if this one isn't, you know, everybody knows this. So we get these two free of charge, just by that. Okay. I, I mean, I don't say repeat after me. I, I try to avoid that wherever possible. Sometimes it's useful, but a lot of times it isn't. So now I say to my students, as you can guess, put your hand here and say this. Now, it's important here it, which is not speak. But I want to go direct because then you feel the muscle switch. So, like this. And can you feel then that you are, there's a muscle there and you are doing something? And we don't need any technical details, we don't need Latin terms, Greek terms, nothing. Just voice on, voice off. And the sign for that is off, on, like a light switch. This is great because immediately we can discover new sounds. So, what is this one? Again? This is with the voice on or off? Oh. So here's the sign. Okay, say that sound. Okay, don't change to this, because that's part of that. Stay here. Voice. So, just to illustrate, that once we have the muscle button, we can find new sounds, even if they're not in the, that language. You see what I'm saying? If you've got one half, you can find the other half by just the muscle button. So now there's the four buttons. What's number one? Okay, so you may say this is a simplification, but it's good enough, and it does everything that needs to be done. And once students have reconnected with these muscles, that is to say they are already connected, but connected uh, outside the habit, not habitually. They're able to connect consciously. Then they are ready to get behind the habit of mother tongue. You see what I'm saying? Once you can connect with these muscles, you, can, you are free of mother tongue, in theory. It takes a little more longer to get free of mother tongue. And you can, in theory, discover any sound in any language. Because you are now connecting, not with the habit, but direct with the four buttons, the four muscle groups. Now, I go on in like manner. And in my case, I like to, in the first lesson, take a quick guided tour around all the sounds. This is not teaching them. This is a tour. Dear students, this is what's in your mouth. Uh, and there are 44 of them, and it's called English. And you've got something similar in your own language, which is not called English, but a lot of them overlap. And the map is actually the same, but we use different bits. And uh, then students find that they have discovered a new territory. Already, by the end of the first lesson, they're beginning to find a map, a personal map of the mouth, which has a tongue which moves around and can go to different locations. It's got teeth. And, 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 and uh, even by the end of the first lesson, they may be able to say, well, that one, and that one, and that one, I, I, I can do those, and they're a bit like my language, but that one, that one, that one, I can't make any sense of those. That's fantastic progress. 
So this is what I mean by all the sounds at once, uh, they work gradually. They, you learn sounds from each other. The sounds affect each other. You can't learn two sounds this week and two next week and two in the second semester and some at uh, proficiency level. We need everything now and everything gets better together forever and ever. Is that okay? So this, this really is holistic. There's only 44 of them. And look, they're all on one piece of paper. Page one. <laughs> And there isn't even a page two. Page two. No, no page two. Nothing there. Page one, the end. And this is everything. Okay, what we're going to do now is jump ahead a bit. And I want to just show you how we can, uh, by learning new sounds, uh, how we can um, harness sounds they know to find sounds they don't know. Think of this like a rabbit warren where the rabbits have 44 holes mm. and some rabbit warrens have 44 holes and the rabbit can go down any hole and come out of any other hole it's the same with sounds I can take a student through any sound and it can come up anywhere else but let me show you or maybe not wait a minute wait. <laughs> ah yeah Excuse us, we're just going a bit, we're just going the long way. Revision. <laughs> and then uh, that, that. And now we are here. So this is what we're going to do. Using one sound to discover others. Can you see this? I know it's difficult at the back, but it's as high as it can be. Where is the tip of your tongue? Okay. Uh, and you reply with the language you've got. So you may say the alveolar ridge, and someone else may say on top. And someone else who hasn't yet worked it out says at the bottom. Uh, everybody is working with it, but gradually, I know, they're going to say it's at the top, it's nearly touching, or it is touching the top behind the teeth. Okay, say this one. Now, while you're saying this, move your tongue back a little bit. So, say this. Stop. Again. Forward. Just a few millimeters, and we make two sounds. And there's so much insight in this for the student. Wow, no technical terms, just me and my tongue. And we just do that. No guesswork, it's as precise as that. And I, it's me that's doing it. Uh, so of course it follows that we can do this. Tongue back, tongue forward. So we just did those two. Now this, this is really cool. You like this one. Look. Tell me what sound this is. It's a very quiet sound. Hard to be clear. It makes sense in context, but on its own it's kind of almost nothing. Make it again. Now, with consonants, there are always two bits that come together to make it happen. What are the two bits? Voice. Uh, voice is quite true, but what are the bits that come together? Okay, which lip? All the lips or? Top? Bottom? Okay, bottom lip. And which teeth? Top, top teeth, okay. So make the sound. Is it possible to do with bottom teeth and top lip? Yes. Try it. <laughs> we, we can say fish and chips. Fish, fish and chips. <laughs> it's completely possible and useful in emergencies. 
it's, it's not so elegant, but, but, but fashions change. <laughs> so, anyway, so now look, here we are. Say this. Okay, so you, you're doing something with the teeth, you're doing something, by the way, teeth is not included in the four muscle, because teeth are not a muscle. The four things that are there are the things which you can move. There are one or two other things which are static, against which you can push and pull to create sound. The teeth is the most obvious one of that, and uh, the palate is another thing which doesn't move, but which the muscles can push against. So, make this sound. Now, when you are making that, where is the tip of your tongue? Down. Okay, tell me more. Uh, down and what else? Behind the teeth. Behind which teeth? Lower. Behind the lower teeth, okay. So, do you agree it's down and behind the lower teeth? Yes. Is it touching the lower teeth? No. Okay. Notice everything I'm doing is questioned. I'm not telling you anything. Except I just told you that I wasn't telling you anything. But apart from that, I'm not telling you anything. So, make this sound. Now, can you feel, with your proprioception, can you feel the touch of your teeth on your lip? Yes. Can you feel? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Now, what we're going to do, you're going to say this sound, and then you're going to move your tongue, which is down here, and put it in the place of that lip, and continue speaking. So, say this. Tongue goes forward to replace the lip, and you'll have this. Okay, start here. Tongue forward, tongue back, tongue forward. Did you get it? Yeah. Okay, so now let's do it with voiced, because it's of course easier to hear. So make this one. Okay, now tongue goes forward to replace the lip. Tongue goes back again. Tongue forward. So from this sound we can make this. And students who have trouble with this, let's begin here. And uh, they don't repeat after me, that's possible, but that's not a way of learning, it's maybe a way of reinforcing, but they find for themselves, and they find that they can take themselves there through their own musculature. Likewise with this one. Let's take another. Make this. Again. And remember, we discovered this from this, but now from this, we'll discover some more. This one. Can you feel the tip of your tongue against the teeth? Yes. Now, what we're going to do, make this, pull the tongue back, tongue back, tongue forward, tongue forward. So, just this little journey of the tongue backwards and forwards. Now suddenly, we extend what we did before, and we find we can include this, once the tongue slips onto the edge of the tooth. So here we are, I mean, unvoiced, uh, tongue back, tongue back, tongue forward, tongue forward. So we've got these six sounds kind of connected in a little string, just by a movement of the tongue along the top. And this is not only helping students to see how sounds are made and how they can make them in non-technical completely physical ways. This is also uh, enriching their map, their mouth map. So now they are knowing their way around the mouth. So there's the same with voiced. Uh, actually, let's do something else first. Is it okay so far? Yeah. So, uh, the kind of things I'm doing now, I, I'm not saying I would suddenly do these together. These are distributed as we need them to solve problems. So, whereas the first thing I showed you, I would do that all together. I'd take an initial trip around the chart. I'd do that in one or a couple of lessons. Maybe 20 minutes each time or something. What I'm showing you now is uh, connections that can be made to help make the map and to help see that pronunciation is something very simple. 
we make it difficult because we go about it as if it's a, a cognitive puzzle. And that's the beginning of the problem, right at the beginning. You remember this? Tongue back, tongue back, tongue forward, tongue forward. Voice, tongue back, tongue back, tongue back! Amazing. So we can discover the English R, like almost by accident, without trying. Let's just take it again. Tongue back, tongue back, tongue back. So what's going on there? Well, we know what's going on here. The tongue is moving back from the teeth to just the uh, tooth ridge behind the teeth. And we know it's moving back again to the edge of the palate. And now I say back again. Now, the tongue has reached nearly maximum back. So it naturally starts to curl instead. And by chance, the top of the mouth also slopes away. So there is no longer a second uh, thing to make a sound. Now the tongue is on its own. It's like a vowel, actually, with the air going over uninterrupted, simply by the shape of the mouth. And now we've discovered, without explanation, we have discovered the English R position. So let's just do that once again. Tongue back, tongue back, tongue back. And in that last position, you can feel that suddenly you're behind, the top of the mouth has moved away. So we no longer have the second thing, and just a tongue curl. Cool, isn't it? Yeah. Now let's do something else. What's this one? Where does the air come from? Are you sure? Okay, pinch your nose. Does it stop? No, send the sound and then pinch your nose. You should stop. Uh -huh. Anybody who doesn't stop? <laughs> Maybe you have a, a leak somewhere in the system. Okay, so this one. What, are, what is the position of this? What are the two things which come together? In this case, two lips, yeah. And they're shut, and the air can't get out. Now, Keep this position. Don't say the sound, but keep the position. The sound. Keep the position. And instead... You see, same position, but of course we do something different. So, this again. Stop. This again. Stop. So, same position, but we've, we've made three different sounds out of one position for English. And um, let's go here. Look at this one. Look, 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 look. Where's the, where's the, where's the air coming from? Is it coming from your nose? Is it, is it coming out of your nose or no, something else? No. <laughs> okay. Right. Uh, now, where's the air coming out? Okay, look, make this sound. And put your hand to block the air from the mouth. Does the sound carry on? The sound stops. No. <laughs> I'm saying this one. Okay, here's a different way to experiment. Say this sound and pinch your nose. Does that stop or carry on? Stop. Okay. Now, so why? Is the air coming out of your nose when your mouth is open? Why doesn't it come out of your mouth? Sorry, I'm just checking the time. I think it's time to stop. Uh, 
Is the air, where does the air come from? It comes out of the nose. Why does it come out of the nose? Why doesn't it come out of the mouth when your mouth is open? Because the tongue is blocking. Okay. The tongue is blocking. How is the tongue blocking? Can you feel how the tongue is blocking? Here's the teeth and the tongue sits inside the teeth beautifully. The tongue just sits there. And finally, this one. No, wait, wait. Make this position. Don't say the sound. Say this. This position. This position. This position. So five sounds from this position. Three sounds from this position. And finally, this one. So three in this position. Five in this position, three in this position, eleven. Eleven sounds from three positions. That's nearly half the English consonants from only three positions. What is the problem? Why are we so worried about pronunciation? It is such a simple thing and so elegant with a choreography which is beautiful. Uh, let's help students to discover and enjoy the choreography by not revealing the choreography, the four things that move, where they are in an endless mystery from which they can never recover because they can never be in control of what happens. And so they resort to copying. But copying is after the habit. Copying is also coping with the habit. By accessing the four muscles, we go behind the habit and we can begin again afresh. More or less, I'm exaggerating just to make the point. So, and that's what proprioception is. Proprioception is, is feeling what the muscles are doing. And once you reconnect with the muscles, you can start afresh. And it's not complicated. There's more to say, but we won't say it now. Is that okay? Did you enjoy that? And uh, should you be interested, uh, commercial. <laughs> You can buy the app, which is free, but uh, if you take my advice, the better one costs three pounds, because it has more functionality. But this is free and you can start with it. And you see, we have the chart, this is exactly the chart that you see there, and this is exactly the ordinary thing. So here we get, there we get uh, the word and you try to find the sound. And you hear each sound when you touch it. <laughs> Here you get the spelling and you, uh, the, and you try to find the spelling. And you hear it. And you can hear the words and you can say the words and you can listen to them. So. And it is also for American and British. It has two charts and two lots of sounds. And you can do all four skills. And that's that's the biggest chart in the world. Of course, it's in China. And to teach the vowels, you have to climb a ladder. Okay, and I showed you this before. But the thing to do is to go to my blog there, and then you can access, without any charge, all of the videos. The 40 videos, one for each sound, and some other stuff, and the longer videos on presenting to a class. And also, there's lots of articles. Uh, nearly all by me on the blog about dealing with different questions of pronunciation. Anyway, thank you very much.